everyone, I'm Chris Confessori, music director of your Brevard Symphony Orchestra, here with another live online preview, uh, talking about the next concert in the Brevard Symphony Orchestra's 2021-22 season. Our season theme is Where Will the Music Take You? Just a couple of weeks ago, we opened the season with Around the World in 80 Minutes. It was a fun concert with lots of variety, music from uh, many different parts of the world, lots of uh, uh, different composers, recognizable pieces. It was a fun program and a great way to kick things off. Uh, coming up next, we have the Mozart Effect. And this program uh, will uh, take place on Saturday, November 13, at 7.30 p.m., uh, the concert will be at the King Center for the Performing Arts, where the BSO is orchestra in residence. Uh, the uh, King Center is located at 3865 North Wickham Road in Melbourne, Florida. Our tickets uh, begin at $29. Uh, we are back this season to regular seating, no more physically distanced seating. Uh, you can get more information on tickets for this concert uh, as well as the rest of the season by visiting our website, brevardsymphony.com. Uh, the, the, I should mention the BSO King Center COVID policy. Uh, we are requiring masks for all in attendance, so bring your mask. Uh, come in regardless of vaccination status. Uh, come on in and, and keep your mask on uh, in, the, in the public areas and in the main auditorium. Uh, the performers on stage uh, will be and backstage will be following uh, the same protocols. So like I said, we, uh, our program is called the Mozart Effect. We visit uh, three locales with this program. We begin with a beautiful Four Movement Suite by Gabrielle Faure, a French composer. Uh, and uh, this was a piece I did not know. I, I, I had heard the title or seen it in, in uh, catalogs before, Mosques and Bergamasques, it's called, and a beautiful four movement suite for a uh, small orchestra and a great way to start off the concert. Uh, that will be followed uh, by one of the most famous uh, compositions by Mozart, Mozart's Piano Concerto Number 21, and uh, that will feature a fabulous pianist who we have worked with on two prior occasions. His name is Brian Wallach, and he will be joining us in just a second. And then after intermission, the program closes with music by Franz Josef Haydn, his final symphony, Symphony Number 104. It's nicknamed the London Symphony. I think actually the last dozen symphonies he composed were four concerts uh, in London, commissioned uh, by a concert uh, promoter there. And uh, there late in his life, he enjoyed uh, touring to London, enjoyed the, the great sounds of the fantastic musicians on the London scene. And this is a fantastic, uh, fantastic symphony by uh, the composer who is regarded as the father of the symphony. So it's a beautiful program. Um, and right now I'd like to uh, introduce our special guest who I mentioned a moment ago. Uh, let's please welcome him now, pianist Brian Wallach. Brian, how are you? All right, Chris. I'm well. How are you? Great to be here. Terrific. Thanks so much for uh, for joining us. Why don't you tell everyone where you are this evening? I am in uh, Colorado at the moment. I, uh, as some of your uh, patrons there will know, I, I was in South Africa for quite a few years with my family. But about two and a half years ago, I uh, got a position here at Colorado State University. And I've been wanting to get back here to the United States anyway. To, to, it's a little easier to, to play a concert when it's a two hour flight instead of a 27 hour <laughs> flight from Africa. <laughs> So, uh, so it's it's it'll be a, a welcome change to come. I think the previous two times we played, I came from Africa to play those concerts. So this will just be a quick little two three hour zip over from Colorado, and uh, it makes concertizing anyway a lot easier to to be over here. Uh, so anyway, I'm in Colorado, 
Uh, we don't have snow quite yet. It's been a, a pretty mild uh, fall thus far. Usually we've had a couple of snowstorms already, uh, but so far the snow's held off. So you're on the faculty there at Colorado State? Yes. Yeah, I'm uh -huh. a professor of piano here at Colorado. Fantastic. And so how big is your studio? A number I've of got, students do you have? Yeah, I've got about 15 students that I work with. You know, we, they, they get a lesson once a week. And, uh, and we have a studio class where everybody comes and tries out things. And even I try out things uh, <laughs> for them, which is a nice opportunity. And, uh, you know, we, we, we work together. It's, it's sort of a, like a little test lab where they can try things out. Even and I try things out and I tell them what I'm working on, what I'm thinking about, uh, how I might practice something. And uh, so I'll be, uh, you know, testing out the Mozart actually next week uh, in the class just to always nice to, to have a little practice performance before you go and play in front of hundreds of other people. Absolutely. So, That's great. Yeah. That's great. And um, and I think you mentioned to me by email, you have a rehearsal and I guess a concert this weekend. You have a rehearsal tonight. Yes, I'm uh, I'm playing this weekend with the uh, Fort Collins Symphony here uh, in Colorado and uh, with Wes Kinney, who I believe you know. And yes, we're I do. playing Mendelssohn One, uh, Mendelssohn One, and uh, and then another poem for piano by Coleridge Taylor Perkinson, which is opening the concert, and then it's will be followed by the Mendelssohn One. So I'll be heading over there uh, just after this interview tonight. Ah. Uh. That's great. Well, thanks for making time for us uh, this evening when you have uh, oh, Mendelssohn uh, on the brain and, and all of that. But yeah. uh, but we appreciate it. And please say hi to Wes. Uh, when I was a student out at USC, he's from uh, California or, or Los Angeles area. And so we were friends uh, out there. He was uh, he was also a student uh, at USC. So I remember uh, attending concerts with him, and we even once went to a, a NFL game when the Raiders were, yes, were still in Los he's a Angeles. Fan. He's, yeah. I recently found and, out he's also a football fan like you and me. So, uh, yes. Okay, so you, <laughs> we had a good time going to see the Dolphins play the Raiders, so that was great. So okay. tell Wes I said hello. I will. So, uh, thank you. So we're we're playing Mozart next week. What can you tell us, tell the audience about the Mozart 21? Well, Mozart, you know, so many of his concertos are very special in, in the realm of Mozart's music, I think, in a way, because of his personal connection. Uh, you know, he wrote these pieces very much for himself to play with the orchestras there in, in Vienna. And so, you know, a lot of times when he was writing great music, it, he wasn't personally going to be playing it. But in these particular instances with many of the concerti, uh, he was certainly going to be playing it. So uh, there's lots of ideas and talk that he saved, you know, some of the best ideas and tunes for, for himself <laughs> to actually deliver. Um, of course, that's debatable. Um, but it's you know, written in a season of so many wonderful concertos that, that, that he wrote. I mean, it's preceded by uh, the, the famous D minor concerto, which he basically wrote both of these like sort of in the same month or back to back. Um, and it's in in so many ways, like the, the complete opposite of, of that D minor concerto. It's just light, it's opera buffa, it's uh, got all the different characters and it's 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 just great fun to to play and experiment and and he's you know starts to to use the orchestration in more and more interesting ways uh really you know starts to push the concerto into the showpiece that eventually beethoven then goes and runs with and establishes even more uh prestige with so it's it's a fantastic work probably one of the most popular mozart uh concertos uh, of course the second movement is uh, used in that famous movie, the Elvira Madigan. And uh, it's just amazing music to play. And it's a piece that, you know, you've played it a lot. You come back to it, there's like a thousand new ways you can do things all the time. There's just never ending possibilities with Mozart that you know, sometimes in, I find in, in, in bigger romantic concertos, you know, there's a thousand ways to do things as well. But 
you kind of have to, there's a, there's a certain kind of freedom in Mozart that, that I just don't always find in other uh, composers that, that you can really do different things and, and just make it alive and fresh. And so every time it's, it's a unique experience. Um, that's great. Well, I know uh, I certainly am looking forward to, to collaborating with you again. And so many of the orchestra members uh, have told me they're looking forward to having you back and especially uh, also looking forward uh, to playing this beautiful work by Mozart. It, it really is special. And as you say, the second movement has this, uh, whether you've seen that movie, I never have seen it, but uh, you know, the, either, the melody but... is instantly recognizable and the concert we just did had several of those kind of pieces and so that'll be fun uh, for our audience uh, to listen for that so on these uh these little preview talks we have we always include some music and you were kind enough uh to share with us a uh, a short video uh, that you recorded uh, music by samuel barber could you tell us about that and then we'll listen yes to it. I, uh, I recorded some pieces. Uh, it was one of the few things I could do during COVID. Uh, we, we have a new piano in the, in the big hall here, and it needed to be broken in. And in a certain way, COVID was, uh, I was uh, probably one of the lucky few. Uh, it, I, I very much enjoyed my COVID experience because I got to play that brand new piano on that stage all day for six months, seven <laughs> months, and, 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 and broke it in. And uh, while doing that, there was also some new recording equipment that they had put in. And so we were just doing some experimenting with recording and angles and mics. And so it was, uh, it was a, a nice COVID experiment to, to record. And I did a number of, of other pieces uh, as well. I did a, a funny virtual, uh, it's not funny. Uh, it was a virtual uh, collaboration on the Beethoven Triple Concerto which there's a, an arrangement for just piano, violin, and, and cello. So, um, so the orchestra part is basically put into the piano as well. So I've got lots of things to do. Uh. Uh, but we recorded it and then recorded it against each other. And uh, it was a, a very nice project that uh, won award actually in South Africa. We got a best classical performance uh, virtual uh, award for that. So that was a nice, that's what drove the, the recording project. And then out of that, I recorded this Barber uh, excursion and uh, Barber Sonata and uh, Fantasy and Fugue uh, of List as well. So anyway, this is the Barber though. It's a little excursion. It's his uh, transcription of On the Streets of Laredo. And uh, it's just a really beautiful little short uh, excursion into American uh, folk tales. It, it, it's, it's, it's great. It's beautiful. Let's have a listen. Thank you.
Oh, that's beautiful. Right. Really right. great. So friends, you. Um, you can visit uh, on, if you go to YouTube and search Brian with a Y, B-R-Y-A-N Wallach, you can find his YouTube channel. And Brian has this beautiful barber excursion you just heard. You can listen to that over and over again because it's so beautiful and you want to get your cowboy groove on. Uh, but you can also <laughs> hear the Beethoven Triple Project that Brian just mentioned. Is the Barber Sonata on there also? Yeah, the Barber's there, and the list, and then mm -hmm. number of older things. And there are excerpts from well. different concertos you've played yep. in the past. But yep. But yeah, beautiful sounding instrument. I'm so glad uh, you had uh, that that time to break it in, and uh, amazing camera work uh, in the. I yeah. especially love the the shot from above down on the the keyboard. Yeah, the drop that, shot. That yeah, that's cool. an interesting angle. Yeah, that, yeah, that I've seen gives yeah. a different perspective of what's happening. So our video producer Andres Roca, who is helping us with this uh, live. Uh, uh, preview this evening, he has been uh, video recording each of our concerts and we share them online a week later. Uh, so he'll be doing that for our concert next week. And uh, he's done a great job of, of capturing all sorts of fantastic uh, shots of the orchestra and our soloists and so forth. So uh, maybe we can, and Andres, maybe we can convince Maria Luisa to climb up into the rafter and get that shot on her <laughs> cell phone down on the, <laughs> down. Yeah. On, the uh, on the keyboard. Anyway, so um, just make well, sure this is great. nicely so it doesn't drop on our head. So. Yes. <laughs> well, we'll just make her stand up there and hold it. So uh, it won't be shaking or anything. Okay. So the okay. two previous times you've been with us, you've played Rachmaninoff III, which is one of the big enchilada concertos of, of, of the piano repertoire. And then you d gave a beautiful performance of the Grieg concerto. Uh, so tell us how uh, different or, or what it's like getting yourself pre prepared for uh, for these different styles of, of concertos. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it can be a challenge because there's different musical expressions that 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 you're trying to to find with, with this uh, these different types of music. The the, the Greek and the Rachmaninoff are, are similar. I mean, maybe the Rachmaninoff is even bigger. Uh, but they still have, in general, these big, grand gestures and, and expressions. Uh, you know, the, the Mozart, as I was sort of saying earlier, the the real magic of Mozart is in the the nuance and in the detail and in the very careful way that, that you can bring different things out in the music. And it's, you know, in a funny way, you you... I find that that you could really sort of practice this kind of stuff more than I mean you would think you've got all these notes in Rachmaninoff and Grieg and you've got to play them. In some ways, though, a lot of those notes play themselves. Mozart, there's a there's a kind of like a, a responsibility. You you really have to put something into every single note because Mozart's one of the easiest composers that just sounds boring if there's not mm. a spark of personality being you know delivered through the, through the music. And so there's a, a real responsibility to, I think, absolutely think about every single thing because there's not huge, uh, you know, textures of music being delivered. So every note, every sound, every direction is, is very important and, and has to be considered and, and thought about and manipulated. And with that, that's why we have all this infinite variety of, of, of ways of, of playing it. Right. Um, but it's well i know the musicians really... look forward to playing a concerto like this uh, because of you know it's so much more like chamber music yes. and uh you know the players that have played with you before remember you being such a communicative uh, uh performer and a great collaborator and we're certainly looking forward uh, uh, to that experience again on a more intimate scale and uh, again, we can't thank you enough for uh, for agreeing uh, to join us next week, and um, and thank you especially for being here tonight. Uh, and have a great rehearsal on Mendelssohn, and a safe trip to Florida. And we'll look forward to seeing you very very soon.
Thanks, Chris. Looking forward to it. We'll see you next week. All right. Thank you, Brian. Okay, so, folks, thanks. before we go, I just want to remind everyone our concert is uh, next Saturday, November 13th, 7.30 p.m. at the King Center for the Performing Arts, the Mozart Effect, music by Gabriel Faure, Mozart, and Franz Josef Haydn. There are two other upcoming performances by the BSO I want to make sure you have on your calendar. Uh, there are seasonal events uh, just two weeks after uh, the concert we've been talking about. We'll have our annual holiday concert, Sounds of the Season. That will take place on Saturday, November 27th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, again at the King Center for the Performing Arts. Uh, we'll be joined by soprano Amy Colfield, and uh, we'll also be joined by uh, members of the Brevard Community Chorus under the direction of Dr. Robert Lamb. Lots of uh, seasonal favorites on this uh, concert, and we'll even count on you in the audience to join in the fun. We have a, an audience sing-along, holiday carol sing-along at the end of the program. So please join us uh, for that. Sounds of the Season, Saturday, November 27th. That is the Saturday just two days after Thanksgiving. So, you know, you're, you've done all your uh, Friday super sale shopping. You're sick of hanging out with your relatives. Take them uh, to the symphony concert and enjoy some beautiful holiday music. Then the very next weekend, Saturday, December 4th, back at the King Center, the orchestra is thrilled to be joining our friends with the Space Coast Ballet Company for their annual production of Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker Ballet. This is an unbelievable production. Look at that gorgeous uh, backdrop you see there. And um, the orchestra will be down in its uh, position in the orchestra pit. There you see us uh, in rehearsal. Uh, the last time we collaborated with them was uh, for their uh, December 2019 uh, production. It's uh, music that's just such a treat to perform. Uh, so many great melodies and colors for the orchestra, and uh, we look forward to that experience. Uh, so tickets for all the performances uh, we've discussed tonight, uh, you, can, you can purchase uh, at kingcenter.com backslash uh, schedule of events. So thank you again for being with us this evening. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next Saturday, November 13th at 7.30 p.m. at the King Center for the Performing Arts for The Mozart Effect. Thank you.